Rise and shine, old timer. It is complete. I had our best and brightest working overtime, fine tuning the greatest burger the world has ever known. I call it the Chemical Burger. What on earth is that color? Now, now, don't judge a burger by its color. Go on, try it. Excuse me. People will no longer fight over food or find reason to hate one another. Mankind will come together, reunited between these fluffy buns. Forget Pax Americana. Say hello to Pax Hamburgana. Pax Hamburgana. And welcome to Half Glass Gaming. I am Julian Childs, and I will be your cook for this episode. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> but seriously, folks, welcome to Half Glass Gaming, your measuring cup for video game goodery. And I'm joined with my culinary cuisine... I have a degree from Le Cordon Bleu Culinary Institute. I am a chef. And they somehow forgot to teach you the difference between oatmeal raisin cookies <laughs> and chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> Fuck you! They look alike! <laughs> well, with that, of course, you already can have, could have guessed that we're joined, as always, by Just Josh. That's me. And the artist currently known as Rev. Uh, that is also me. And, of course, Mandy. Hi! Hey, that was pretty low key. It was a letdown. Yeah. <laughs> All that build up and then. Yeah, I like this. I think anybody who's been paying attention to the podcast knew what to expect mm -hmm. out of Mandy. Yeah. You know, she's in the pocket until we need facts, and then she's just scatting and bebopping all over the place. <laughs> That's what she's doing. You know, it's really cutting a rug. I'm Julian. That was the silence that precedes my name. <laughs> Didn't precede your name, though. It followed. It well, proceeds the, the one too. cupcake already hit you that hard, huh? Yeah, we've been drinking cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> we have. <laughs> yeah, Mandy made some pretty alcoholic cupcakes. They're, they're white Russian cupcakes, mm. so I just I, I made a white Russian, but I put it in a cupcake. Uh, now, I'm never going to complain about getting cupcakes, because cupcakes are awesome, mm -hmm. but why have the middleman? Just Let's just have the white Russians, really. Or, you know, this is a video game podcast. We could have had drinks based on video games. There's actually a website uh, called The Drunken Moogle that just has this big, huge list of different mixed drinks based on different video game properties. Mm. Uh, and it's it's great. They could do a uh, portal-themed drink, and it could be called The Cake is a Rye. No, Cake is a Lie is my least favorite video game meme of all time. I hate it. Like, there are things that stand up somewhere on my body whenever I hear it. <laughs> no, uh, Eric Wolpaul, who who wrote Portal, actually hates it, too. It's just people beat it into the ground. The other thing is it's not like Arrow to the Knee, where people actually wrote jokes around it mm -hmm. and wrote it into the ground. Like, people were just saying, the cake is a lie. The cake is a lie. And, like, they're just repeating a phrase. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're you're not doing and they weren't even repeating it appropriately. No, you're totally right. People just like, oh, the cake is a lie. No, you 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 missed the point. I was in a college class. There, the teacher asked you to say your favorite food, and some kid, like this gamer dude, like you know, like the clear, t like <laughs> the type, <laughs> the gamer dude he's type. Code red. Yeah, he gets up in front of the class, and he's like cake and like the whole class is like okay you like cake. the fat dude likes cake like imagine that <laughs> yeah and then he like goes and sits down at his desk and he's mumbling he's like it's it's a gamer joke <laughs> and it's like no it's not a fucking joke dude you're the fat kid and you like cake like that's what everyone got mm -hmm. from you getting up and saying this it was like like oh no one's surprised in this room <laughs> like <laughs> That's the thing, too, is, like, people treated it like this big video game in-joke, but, I mean, I was sick of Cake is a Lie, like, a year before I ever played Portal, because you didn't need to have, mm -hmm. have played Portal to have heard. I mean, and they don't even actually say the Cake is a Lie in Portal. It's just written on a wall. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and what's more is Portal actually plays into a lot of uh, psychological stuff. 
So the idea of there being a reward at the end, and then near the end, you find this note, oh, the cake is a lie, well, shit. You know, like, it's supposed to be demoralizing, Mm -hmm. not funny. Mm -hmm. The funny part is after you beat the game, when there's actually cake. Mm -hmm. It should have been, the cake is a pie. Stop it! (laughs) Like, spelt like P-I. Oh, yeah, that's even better. Stop it! (laughs) Yeah, people... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, but the thing is, people get really mad when people don't like their cake is a lie, non jokes. Like when mm-hmm. Eric Walpole said that, like people were furious at him for saying that, oh, I'm so sick of cake jokes. I'm not going to put anything about cake in a video game ever again. They're mm-hmm. like, whoa, they're just so mad. Like, foaming at the mouth because people don't like their non-jokes. I mean, I think maybe people like it because all they have to do is say the cake is a lie. Yeah. And not try to be clever or witty or anything and they feel like they've made a joke. It's like one of those things where it's like wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Like, I'm in on this. It should have been a block of cheese. Yeah, it could have been a block of cheese. Everyone I, likes I, cheese. I, I do. I like cheese more than cake. Everyone yeah, likes cheese. I like cheese because, more I mean, than Unless cake. you're lactose intolerant. Despite all the rage. Stop it! <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> Still just Nicholas Cage. <laughs> I have a hat that I'm now hitting people with when they make terrible jokes. Yeah. You the cake look. is a lie. <laughs> Ow! Ow! <laughs> you deserved that one. <laughs> it's the yeah. worst joke I could think of. Is there an arrow to the knee cocktail? I, I actually don't think they came up with one. We should invent one. I would want it like something really strong, like a shot at, like there's tequila in it. Uh, maybe some Everclear. Mm-hmm. You know, so the idea is you're <laughs> just going to drop. Everclear. Yeah, that sounds terrible. disgusting. It, it is. It's going to be terrible. You're taking an arrow to the knee. Nobody enjoys yeah, that. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It's like, you know, the idea of a suicide where you go to the soda fountain, you put every single flavor of soda, and then you drink it, and it's disgusting. <laughs> mm-hmm. right. So that's what an arrow to the knee should be. Although, actually, I always be like, like I was having drinks. a great night, and then I took an arrow to the knee. Yeah, there's, right? a, there's a, a bar in St. Paul called uh, the Checker Bar. And they have a drink called the trash can that is literally everything <laughs> thrown into a glass and then you top it off with a Red Bull. Right. Ew. Isn't there a drink where like they, you know, because they're constantly spilling drinks on the counter. Matt shot. Night, where, what? It's called a Matt shot. They pick up the, the drink mat where they put the glasses uh, and just like dump whatever's still in the mat into a glass for you. Some bars will give it to you for free if you catch them at the end of the night and they're cleaning up. Once cool. uh, Josh and I saw a cop pulling over a Red Bull truck. <laughs> <laughs> And we were just imagining the jokes that the cop was trying to make as he was writing the ticket. Red Bull gives you wings, cops give you tickets. <laughs> but like I bet I bet like I bet what actually happened was he pulled the guy over and then he pulled out and he's like shit and like all these jokes are coming to him like after the whole thing was sitting yeah. done and he's like damn it this then he pulled him time. over again <laughs> guy, just looking for more red bull trucks to pull over yeah he could have said officer uh could you could you maybe not give me a ticket this time and the cop could have said i won't give you a ticket when pigs fly because the red bulls they give you wings that wasn't like funny that was just dumb <laughs> well but i didn't get a hat so i think <laughs> no it wasn't even worth the hat no, they have the most boring name for a, a Skyrim drink. Elderflower Scroll Skyrim. I mean, if you're going to invent video game cocktails, I feel like they should be super goofy. They should. I fully yeah. agree. Is it Sky Vodka mixed with rum? Then yeah. you could just call it Skyrim, and that would be a funnier name. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, Sky Vanilla Vodka, Sparkling Elderflower Press, uh, Spiced Rum, and an Orange Peel. What's the Elderflower doing in there? It's ruining everything. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, I know it's there for the Elder Scrolls, but really, uh, it'd be a better drink. Mm-hmm. That's probably exactly what it's in for. Uh, overachievers they just get right they just don't know when to stop yeah You're much right. like people who made cake <laughs> lie jokes much like <laughs> and people who made arrow to the knee jokes but at least people made jokes so mm, yes. that, that one didn't wear at me like cake is a lie did i think we're all a little punch drunk off those cupcakes but oh you guys are yes yeah, so we're gonna take a cupcake break and that ain't no lie as always i'd like to thank 2x a and uh wheelie for the musical contribution and of course uh aaron voltenson for the uh awesome uh slider graphics that you can find on uh retrovault.com of course you could always go to uh, halfglassgaming.com and just wrap yourself in the snuggie that is our accompanying website um you can find us on stitcher radio and uh, i too 
iTunes. Uh, feel free to give us a uh, platinum uh, five star rating. But anyways, we'll be back from the break shortly where we're going to talk about food. <laughs> Welcome back from the break. It's turkey time, and we're going to start talking about food and video games. You know one thing that Castlevania and Thanksgiving have in common? It'd be that turkey. Are there turkeys in the wall? (laughs) There are. There are turkeys in the wall in Castlevania games. Oh, I know they're in Castlevania Mm -hmm. games. I'm saying when you go places for Thanksgiving, are there turkeys? (laughs) Hey, have you ever tried to find a turkey on like the day before Thanksgiving at the grocery store? You're going to have to knock down some walls Mm -hmm. to find where they stocked the backstop. I'm a vegetarian. I don't don't have to hunt down turkeys. We have Mm -hmm. a sweet deal can make mashed potatoes. I make awesome mashed potatoes. Mashed, mashed potatoes are really fantastic. I uh, I really enjoy making a really simple green bean casserole, uh, which I learned growing up down in Texas because it's, it's a very southern thing, I, I think. You didn't mm-hmm. learn it in culinary school? Uh, no, my culinary degree is fucking useless. I've, I've heard working in a restaurant is actually super, super it, terrible. That's why I don't do it anymore. It's just, I'm not crazy enough for it. You're making shit wages in the first place. You, you, like, unless you're just a rock star chef that you can walk into any place and just whip out everything in no time at all, you're making shit wages. I, I did dishes at a uh, pizza place. I was actually a delivery driver, but since they charged so much for their pizza, they didn't have a lot of deliveries. Mm-hmm. And so I was constantly doing the dishes. And the, the one thing that drew people in was on Thursday nights, it was like, I think, $8 for all-you-can-eat pizza and all-you-can-drink beer. Mm-hmm. And so Thursday nights were me doing dishes for like eight hours straight. Yeah. And people would like stuff entire slices of pizza into their beer cups and it was the worst. Yeah, yeah people do that shit. Yeah, I worked at a restaurant for three days when I was a teenager and uh, I gotta say I would much rather just play Yoshinoya Beef Bowl Simulator Thrills. <laughs> I don't know what any of those words meant. <laughs> it's a game in which you work at a uh, Yoshinoya beef bowl restaurant and you're just slinging beef bowls, man. I have a friend who is a professional chef and he told me that because you sweat a lot because it's hot when you're cooking and you can't like do anything to wipe away the sweat because it would be disgusting. You get like blisters down your back at the top of your butt. Oh, like yeah. They're just constantly there. No, all that the happens. Time. And your feet are constantly in pain because you have to be on your feet. Uh, eat corns and blisters on your feet. That stuff. So, happens. I mean, no butt blisters when you're playing Yoshinoya Beef Bowl Simulator. Mm-hmm. That's Unless you're playing it on the toilet and you get a hemorrhoid. Yeah, right. It's yeah. on the PS2, so you're probably not. You're probably and, playing it on your couch. Mm-hmm. And, and also, you're not going to randomly hack off a part of your finger. But uh, no, I mean, video games are kind of obsessed with food, and it's actually really hilarious mm-hmm. to me. There's like food power ups in every game ever. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of become like this go to sort of this is how we explain why this gives your guy health or vitality. He's eating food. It's just not how it works. Like last night, I ate like half a pizza, and <laughs> the next thing I did was like go straight to bed because yeah. <laughs> I felt so terrible. Like You weren't fighting ninjas. It the wasn't sword. a power-up. I didn't. <laughs> it was a power-down. <laughs> pizza is only a power-up when you're a mutated uh, ninja turtle. Mm-hmm. Or Toe Jam and Earl. Or Toe Jam and Earl. No, I was playing an old Sega game called Fatal Labyrinth. Uh, it's a roguelike, and you go through dungeons and fight monsters. And I was eating every single piece of food I saw, because that's just what you do in video games. And then I just dropped dead all of a sudden, and I realized that I overate, and I died from overeating. That's what I did last night. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Neopets used to have that. The former owner of Neopets is the, the father of the actor who played Logan on Veronica Mars, and he's a huge Scientologist, and there's Scientology symbols in I, Neopets. I knew none of that. I don't think he owns it anymore, but... I, I mm. just remember Neopets as, you know, cute 
browser-based shit from when I was in high school. I got scammed in Neopets, man. It's it sucked. I, I saved up like millions of whatever the currency is called in Neopets, and I was gonna buy a paintbrush, and then I like went to one of those stores where it was like a paintbrush for super cheap, and I was so excited, and then they took my login information and all my stuff. That's pretty sad. I was bummed. Uh, no, uh, Neopets had a similar thing where you had to keep them fed, but if you fed them too much, they would get bloated, and then they would like have health and stat problems or something Mm -hmm. but yeah otherwise i don't think i've ever seen an overeating mechanic in a game usually it's just you know punch this trash can oh look a turkey fell out you should eat that well you're like a whole turkey right because you should absolutely eat a whole turkey that you find in a trash can i always like the ducktales game because you get soft serve ice cream for health and it's like how is that working how are you in this crazy place and like it's still the perfect temperature because ducks have to maintain a certain body temperature in order to be healthy well, I'll say all that, that po- uh, pogoing I mean, is like it? well for one like, causing him to overheat is it mrs beasley gives you the soft serve ice cream mrs beasley yeah. yeah you also just find them in like blocks and shit but like what's how is the ice cream not melting especially in the amazon yeah, if it was the only food power up on the ice level that would be and one on the thing moon. but it, but it's not there's well, the the soft moon, serve yeah. ice cream everywhere and it's always perfect it's never melting to touch on the overeating Grand Theft Auto starting, I think, with San Andreas, you could go to restaurants and buy food. And if you eat too much in a row, your character vomits. Yeah, on Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, you can make Snake throw up by eating rotten food. You could also make him throw up if you spin him around really fast in the menu. And then when you go back into the game, he'll be nauseous and he'll throw up. Do we know why so many games use food for healing power-ups? I think there are kind of two reasons. Uh, The first is just that when there were really limited graphics, it was easier to make something that was recognizable as a piece of food than something that was recognizable as medicine. A lot of medicine would have kind of looked like drugs. Mm -hmm. Video games had their resurgence during the war on drugs. Yeah, like Resident Evil. I mean, how do those fucking green plants work? You know. But uh, and then <laughs> part of it too is that when Pac-Man was created, Pac-Man is entirely designed to look like food. Pac-Man is supposed to be a pizza with a slice missing from it, and the pellets Pac-Man eats are supposed to be cookies. Really? But it was you can't tell if they're open. <laughs> they went to the same culinary school as them. <laughs> <laughs> they don't quite know what cookies look like. Yeah. <laughs> but the idea behind it was because they wanted the game to be appealing to both boys and girls. And they thought girls would like it if there was food in it. <laughs> if there was a pizza eating cookies. I mean, I do like I, I, I like the idea of a pizza eating cookies. Yeah. So I guess I guess they're probably accurate. Yeah. Nailed well, it. <laughs> yeah, you know, the audience at the time might not like it, but their kids are going to love it. Right? <laughs> but like, it's not even like a sexist thing. Like girls like cookies and being in the kitchen it's just like girls like food right so it's just it's so bizarre i I, love it i'm firmly of the belief that the early video game developers just lived on a steady diet of cocaine (laughs) like that's how they did it cocaine and lsd but I think that's why food power-ups are so random. Is mm-hmm. just they're just not thinking like what makes sense. They're thinking what's recognizable, and like even like something like Kirby, where mm-hmm. the entire game is designed around eating everything. You have food power-ups. The main power-up is a tomato. Mm-hmm. And Mario, he's eating those mushrooms, right? Oh, absolutely. And I mean, you shouldn't eat wild mushrooms; it can kill I mean, you. Right. I mean, what <laughs> Mario else? Is, will. What else is he going to do with the mushrooms? Crush mm-hmm. them up and snort them? Well, well, I mean, it's a very Alice in Wonderland sort of thing in it Mario. Is. Mm-hmm. And then he eats the stars also. And stars are very. I, I think he. I, I think he actually does crush up the stars and snort those. <laughs> I like how in Deadly Premonition you have breakfast in the morning and you sit, just can just sit down and relax and have a cup of coffee. And you can just sit there as long as you want yeah. and just like Does sip your coffee. Cup? Does he finish it? I don't think he ever does. does doesn't does he ask the innkeeper lady for like a refill? See, he can, yeah. But like, he hasn't finished his coffee. He just wants a warm up. And the innkeeper has really bad hearing. So you're eating breakfast while shouting conversations <laughs> at each other. And you're misunderstanding every single thing you say. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, like, the whistle music is playing. Mm-hmm. So it's just people shouting over this amazing whistling music. So aside from food as, like, a power-up, I mean, 
what about like using it in other interesting ways? Uh, a lot of games with dating sim mechanics have you give food to your love interest. Like Harvest Moon has been doing that always. You just find the food that your girlfriend likes and you give it to her. Yeah. And then, well, she won't be your girlfriend yet. But if you give her enough food, she will be. You give her enough bread and she's going to uh, be. In Persona 4, you can make lunch for the girl you like or just somebody you want to be better friends with and like bring lunch to school for them and sit down and eat it together and it boosts your affection. Hmm. Uh, Pokemon in uh, the third generation, they introduced feeding berries to Pokemon to improve their stats. And it was because they had Pokemon contests and like so you could take like some ugly duck looking Pokemon and feed it a bunch of berries and they'd be winning beauty contests because the berries would make your pokemon more beautiful it was really weird but it was very fun uh, they make it the, it's fur shinier mm-hmm. you're right were they boys and berries those berries had some weird names like pika berry and and wappa berry and yeah mm. it, it's like they came up with a bunch of berry names by just asking a four-year-old to say some words mm-hmm. <laughs> I had a coworker who uh, talked about like eating Pokemon and what the various different Pokemon would taste like, <laughs> and he wanted he wanted to do a whole series of articles where he paired Pokemon with with uh, craft beer. To be fair, the the first generation Dex entry for Farfetched specifically says that they've been hunted almost to extinction because they taste good. Well, and speaking of beer, it doesn't just end with food. You know, now you can quite literally get drunk in a good number of video games. <clears throat> the first game I remember getting drunk in was actually Harvest Moon. Oh, wow. But, <laughs> but uh, it was at, I think, a New Year's festival, and I drank, and then it's mm-hmm. like, oh, I had too much juice. I feel dizzy. Time to go to bed. <laughs> but, like, I was really, my character's really obviously drunk. Like, mm-hmm. their little lines above my head, and mm-hmm. my face was all red. In Lord of the Rings Online, it had one of my favorite, like, drunk mechanics, because you drink and drink and drink and get drunk, but you can, like, everything starts getting blurry and moving around, and it's really hard to, like, it starts getting really hard to navigate because everything's, like, you know, swirling around, but you can still keep drinking, Mm -hmm. and you can drink until you black out, Mm -hmm. and if you black out, you will wake up somewhere completely random without any of your clothes. (laughs) Well, there's a mission in Skyrim where you go out on a binge with a local drunkard and wake up somewhere. Right, somewhere. And you wake up in the Temple of Debella in Mar- Markarth. That's right. Uh, and no, the, that's place right. Is, the place is just a mess. And you're like, uh, Priestess, what happened? Yeah, I'll tell you if you clean this shit up. <laughs> <laughs> in, in a World of Warcraft, if you drink enough, you get a new ability. And it's just a super-powered vomiting ability. <laughs> and I mean, it was actually a pain because there are people who would like go in the big towns and just drink a bunch. Of, like They could vomit all over while you were trying to shop at the auction house. <laughs> in uh, GTA 4, you could go out on dates or hang out with people. Um, and one of the activities was you can go to like the bar. And it would be hilarious. You know, They would just get hammered. And trying to control the character was next to impossible. But not only that, like the person that you were with, depending on like the time or the character itself, the things that they would say, like sometimes on a date, this one girl, Kate, would just get like belligerent and hostile towards you. And then you'd have to get into your car and drunk drive both of you home. Man, it was absolute mayhem. I uh, I have a Skyrim mod that does essentially what uh, Lord of the Rings Online does, where if you drink too much, you black out and you wake up naked some random place in Skyrim. And that one's a lot of fun, too, because I one time woke up on top of Bleak Falls Barrow. Yeah, see, that's cool, because in most games, when you drink, it's like it's blurry or whatever the effect is. And then literally, like, maybe a minute later, boom, it's just like clicks. Everything's fine. No hangover or anything. No anything. Yeah, right. yeah. In The Witcher Three, uh, there are there are power ups that are food, uh, but there are also power ups that are alcohol, mm-hmm. and so you can get the power uh, provided by the alcoholic power up, but you also get the drunk effect. Yeah. They had that in Bioshock too, didn't they? I was thinking yeah. Bioshock did have does have alcohol. Bioshock actually had the best looking food I have ever seen. Yeah. Like not that it looked appetizing, but like that the designs for the labels were amazing. I think there's cigarettes too. Yes. And they yeah. boost your magic but they take they away from your, your health. health. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Persona 4 has a part where everybody goes and gets drunk and you're <laughs> high school students and you're all super drunk but then if you find out you didn't actually drink anything alcoholic you were just a <laughs> bunch of dumb teenagers who like drank non-alcoholic booze and pretended they were really drunk. Mm. 
And I, I loved that. I feel that. like I saw that in an anime once. I mean, there was a Persona 4 anime. So maybe I saw the Persona 4 anime then. <laughs> there was a game called NARC. I remember it, yeah. Where the you... only NARC I remember is, is the arcade game. It was like kind of loosely based on that franchise. So it was like a mini open world, but you were an undercover police officer and you go around and like confiscate drugs. Confiscate. Well, that's just it. Quotes. So you could like put them in dispensers for like rewards from the police department or whatever, or you could take them. <laughs> and like LSD would make everything look crazy and it would start playing like 60s themed Vietnam type <laughs> rock. <laughs> And it would, like, give you maximum bullet time or something bizarre. It was, like... <laughs> That's kind of hilarious. Yeah. It was not that great of a game. But, man, I can't believe they got away with that. But, like, drugs are pretty prominent now in games as well. Yeah. I mean, like, Far Cry 4 had all the, the crazy subplots mm-hmm. where you'd... You were taking the experimental drugs from those guys who were up in that up yeah. in that shack, and then you would like run around, and it would be like a crazy colored world, yeah. and everything would be bright red, and you'd hear that crazy music. And GTA Online, you could rip bong hits at dudes' cribs. Oh, that's right. No, in uh, in GTA Five, there was the whole uh, legalized marijuana set of submissions where you would like. You know, take a hit of pot laced with something and yeah. all of a sudden you'd start seeing aliens and you'd have a <laughs> chain gun and you'd be like blasting aliens with a chain gun. And then you just like wake up and be like, oh, man, what was that? Well, like, and the funny part was when you come across that guy as Franklin, he smokes the weed and you're waiting for it and then nothing happens. He's like, this shit is whack. <laughs> You can get drugs at the bar at Deus Ex, but uh, in Deus Ex, like, the drugs are really almost medicinal drugs because mm-hmm. there's a plague going around and drugs can keep you from getting the plague. So it's not, it's, it's more like eating a food power-up. Yeah. Do you guys ever play, like, actual, like, cooking-based games? I'm more likely to play games with cooking in them mm-hmm. than cooking-based games. I did play uh, a lot of Cooking Mama. Mm-hmm. Cooking Mama was actually based on a, another series. Cooking Mama is a spiritual successor to a promotional game about mayonnaise. <laughs> it's called Matoko Chan to Wonder Kitchen. There were ten, only 10,000 copies of the game made, and it was exactly like Cooking Mama. It was for the Super Famicom, and mm. you played it with the mouse pad that you could get for Mario Paint. Mm-hmm. And uh, the only difference is that you had to put mayonnaise in every dish, and there are cooking contests like there are in Cooking Mama, and you'd win if you used more mayonnaise. Huh. So why not just make your dish all mayonnaise? So you mentioned uh, Motoko-chan No Wonder Kitchen. Do you know what the earliest cooking game would be? I mean, it's it depends on how you define cooking game. I mean, because like Pressure Cooker mm-hmm. is probably the first cooking game, which came out in 1983. But that's really more like a standard, you know, game. It's just collecting the parts in the right order to make the food. But there's like mm-hmm. a cooking mechanic in that, to be sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matoko-chan No Wonder Kitchen is actually the earliest pure cooking game that I was able to find that came out in 1993. Hmm. Remember at Parappa when he'd like make breakfast, be rapping about it? Yeah. Be like flipping flipping eggs and stuff. Yeah, well you learn kung fu from an onion. So <laughs> <laughs> Um, do those games actually have real recipes in them? Yeah, a lot of them do. Can uh, they kind of teach you how to cook? Yeah, like Cook, Serve, Delicious. If uh, any of you are familiar with that, like, absolutely. You can learn to cook by playing Cook, Serve, Delicious. Hmm. Cooking Mama, like, some of the recipes are weirder. Mm-hmm. Uh, and part of that's because they're all Asian recipes, too, mm-hmm. and I'm not used to cooking that type of food. But, I mean, they're reasonably appropriate. But uh, I'm more, a lot more likely to play something like a Tales game where cooking is basically just crafting. Mm -hmm. I got like super addicted to this game called Nom Nom Galaxy. I put in like 40 hours into that game in like three days. I was so hooked on it. And the whole premise is that you're exploring the galaxy and you're trying to find new combinations of soup. You like terraform this planet and then build a soup factory (laughs) and then you have to like catch the wildlife or like harvest the flowers or, you know, just make different combinations of things. You're Mm -hmm. like, oh, I wonder how that 
red hoppy bird thing would taste with this big blue flower and mm. then you would like throw them together in a soup and ship it off and see if it sold well mm. <laughs> you would keep going to, to more and more planets to like find the most dangerous planet with the most like hardest to find ingredients uh one thing that's always disappointed me is that almost all survival games include some kind of cooking but the cooking is just crafting too and i think it would be really fun to have a survival game with actual cooking mechanics mm-hmm. the only thing i've played that's like that is uh the lost in blue series Mm. which are games where you get stranded on an island with a girl Mm -hmm. and she can cook for you if you bring her food or you can cook the meals yourself and you actually have to cook them and it's really just like you know heating up like vegetables over Mm. a fire and turning them so they cook appropriately but it's it's real cooking mechanics it's really fun so that's what you mean when you say as opposed to like crafting where it's just you know combine this item combine this item it's done Done. It's not no steps of the cooking, right? Like the crock pot and don't starve. Yeah, mm-hmm. where you can you can take a rabbit and kill it, and then mix it with two carrots and a stick, and mm-hmm. then you've got kebabs. Or you can mix it with like three berries, and you've got meatballs. But in <laughs> that game, are... you can take that rabbit or those berries and put it into the fire and cook. If you cook it in a crock pot, it usually refills more of your hunger. Mm. No, I, I've been playing Don't Starve like mm-hmm. obsessively lately, and I have a bunch of new games to play. And all I want to play right now is Don't Starve. Mm-hmm. I made it to 45 days last night, but a monster attacked my camp, and I didn't have enough food. We always tend to play Don't Starve when we're having kind of a rough time. There was one night where all I wanted was some chicken wings. Like, just like I just want some wings. We've all been there, man. So we went to Buffalo Wild Wings by U of M. <laughs> And there's nowhere to park because there was a fucking football game. Mm-hmm. And so and so then we were like, well, let's go out to Roseville. And it was like right before Christmas. And so Roseville's where like the big shopping center was. Mm-hmm. And it turns out Buffalo Wild Wings in Roseville is the same exit as the fucking mall. <laughs> and so we spent probably an hour and a half trying to get to Roseville, even though it's like a 20 minute drive. And we uh, took the same exit as the mall. And we finally got to Buffalo Wild Wings. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's going to be like an hour away. And I was just like you know, fuck you. And then we just like left. We and we got, Little Caesars got terrible Yeah, pizza. we got the $5 pizza at Little Caesars and just sat there being grumpy. But then we played Don't Starve and it was I all mean, right. It, oh, I mean, it's a good game to play when you're in a bad mood because everything goes wrong and it's not like a normal survival game where you just have to manage things. There are all these random things that can happen. Like, you know, a random giant badger destroying your camp for winter. The longest I survived was 19 days. I found a farm, started planting, and then got attacked by a, a pack of wild dogs and died. You gotta <laughs> lead them into the beefalo, man. There weren't any <laughs> beefalo around. Well, that's it. You gotta set, set up your camp right next to beefalo. Well, see, I had, I had found the farm. But, but far so. enough so that when the beefalo are in heat, they won't try and attack you. Wait, yeah. the beefalo get in heat? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then they get super aggressive. <laughs> I've, I've, like, every time I play a game of Don't Starve, I look for beefalo and then when i find beefalo that's where i set up my camp yeah that's what i do too well i learned how to play don't starve by watching josh play don't starve and it's it's lasted you for 45 days <laughs> yeah no yeah. i mean i'm doing better in don't starve than what you day are, are you now. on josh well currently on, i think on day 28 uh-huh. no my record my record is 101 oh, wow. and i had like three meat effigies and i think two touchstones and I just, I blew through all of my lives within like two days because <laughs> I was being super reckless by that point. Mm. And that's the thing is like, I feel like in Don't Starve, in, unless something goes wrong right away, like I'm really careful and really cautious and then I get to the point where I'm reckless and I die yeah. right away. It's, See, and I'm, I'm probably never going to get much further than I have in Don't Starve just because with my ADHD, like I start wandering around and go, oh, well, I've got enough food to last for tomorrow, so I should be fine mm-hmm. and I, I already know if i ever get to winter i'm dead <laughs> yeah yeah and i mean winter and don't starve is really about intense uh preparation beforehand and if you know how to prepare for winter 
it's not bad. But if you don't and you haven't been like preparing for it, like it will just wipe you out. Yeah. Set up near a bunch of rabbit holes and you can trap them and just keep eating rabbits all winter. See, I've, I've survived that way before for a few days. What's the craziest thing you can eat in there? And don't starve? Yeah. Uh-huh. I know there are, there are a lot of recipes where you can just throw sticks in. Mm-hmm. Just like <laughs> throw a bunch most, of sticks in. Most recipes let you use filler and only a couple banned sticks as filler. So you can yeah. just be eating like twigs. Yeah, you you can on... eat roasted birch nuts. You can eat seeds, mm-hmm. but the, you barely refill any Yeah, health. it doesn't do anything. But like kebabs, you can make kebabs and don't starve. And that makes sense to mm-hmm. throw a stick in because you have to have a stick. But like, right, the like eggplant salad or whatever depending on the stick you could and it's filler so you could actually do it wouldn't taste good but you could actually chop it up finely enough that it would be suitable filler you can make dragon fruit pie with one dragon fruit and three sticks <laughs> can you throw fish in the pot with sticks and make fish sticks um, yeah, the, the, you, the, can you can make, make fish, fish sticks. sticks i'm just trying to remember what the recipe is because i can't figure out how to fish and don't starve I, for, yeah i've never lasted long enough to figure out much in that game well, yeah, yeah I you can that's... make fish sticks with fish and sticks ah see i told you and arc survival evolved uh also has more realistic cooking mechanics apparently there's a soup recipe that you've got to have five pieces of water and 20 lemons Eight pieces of water yeah, right <laughs> however they measure that out i've never played the game i, have a I hope it's down. just hold like little pieces, pieces of, of paper hold on, right. water. hold on a second you've got a culinary degree and you can't tell me what pieces of water are uh, not in terms of what Ark Survival Evolved does. Go back to the cookie factory. Did, did, I, men- <laughs> did I mention how useless a culinary degree is? Uh, you know, in Persona 4, when you cook, like, you have to make substitutions because you don't have enough food in your kitchen. And it's like, hey, hey, what would be a good substitution for this ingredient? And then you have to pick. And how good your dish turns out depends on your knowledge of substitution in cooking. Like, if you know that That's- what flour will do when you add it to your sauce. So, I mean... Culinary degree worth something. Yes, and and in that place, uh, it is actually really worthwhile to know mm-hmm. what substitutions you can make. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why I like baking more than I like actually cooking, because baking often has a lot more leeway in what you can and can't screw up. Mm-hmm. You know, like if, if you're half a cup off on flour, the worst that's going to happen is it doesn't rise as much as it should. Easiest recipe, a pound cake. Yeah, right. I'm kind of hungry now. I'm starving. You know, in Mad Max, you eat dog food and and you can kill random lizards running around and eat it's that. It's very as well. accurate. Oh, you can also the Man eat, Max uh, franchise. You can also eat maggots from corpses. Yeah, I mean that was like a big subplot in the Road Warrior. Mm-hmm. Is like eating dog food, and you're actually eating Dinky D. <laughs> <laughs> which is the dog food brand. Yeah, right. It seems like a lot of JRPGs include cooking mechanics. Why is that? Well, I think part of it is about pacing. Mm-hmm. If you were playing uh, Brawler or something with faster paced combat, you need instant healing. So, mm-hmm. you know, just eating food and healing is enough. JRPGs are a lot slower paced. You know, a lot of JRPGs will have you sleep at it in and spend the night to refill your health. And uh, the first game I can remember with cooking mechanics is Breath of Fire 4. But uh, cooking is in line with that, like taking the time to cook a meal. Even if you're crafting and not cooking, which is what you're doing in almost every JRPG, that makes sense with the, pa- the slower pacing, that it's more deliberate. You're taking the time, sitting around with your party at a campfire, cooking a meal together. Really? Tails has some pretty fast-paced cooking. You can set it up in Tales of Graces F that a certain type of food is automatically cooked for you at the beginning of every battle, and that's giving you stat bonuses mm-hmm. or like... Like it can be auto resurrecting food, mm. stuff like that. So it's pretty sweet, and it is. But that has really fast paced actiony combat, so it's fitting. Mm-hmm. In uh, Disgaea Five, there's a whole like subplot about eating curry. And so eventually you can, like, make different types of curry that will give you bonuses for battle and stuff. There's a character that, like, before you fight any battle, he just sits down and starts eating. They're like, what are you doing? And he's like, got to eat before the battle. I found a food-related exploit in Disgaea 5. I'm having a lot of fun with it. If you use an unopened soda to heal yourself in battle, it'll heal a small amount of health, but it'll also fill up your XP bar about one-eighth, and then it'll become an open soda, and you can do it again. Huh. So I've 
I've been stacking up on them, and every time my character can't take a turn, I have them use a soda mm-hmm. so that they're getting more XP. I feel like you level up way slower in Disgaea 5 than in the previous games. Maybe that's true, but that's because there are more leveling exploits, and there are characters that will get more XP than your other characters. The three characters that perform the best will get more XP than everybody else at the end of a battle. Yeah, and you can you can also start characters at higher levels too and like in the older games you, you couldn't do that hmm. sleeping dogs the uh, pork bun guy gained quite a bit of, of uh, notoriety at once that game came out there was a guy on the side of the road everywhere who would sell you pork buns and he was famous for saying things like a man who never eat pork bun is never whole man <clears throat> why don't you have a pork bun in your hand i mean <laughs> it's like the absolute most annoying and hilarious thing that's a good question. Why don't you have a pork bun in your hand? Because he's a vegetarian. That's not a good excuse. I, I like being a vegetarian in video games, no matter what, if it's possible. It's yeah, just fun. like we already mentioned it on an earlier episode of the podcast, but like life is strange. Mandy always mm-hmm. will take the vegetarian option. And I'll try to be a vegetarian in Minecraft. I won't always, especially if I've gotten struck by lightning many times. <laughs> but I mean, it's fun. It's just, it makes the game more challenging. Like sure. it's entertaining. Mm-hmm. In a Lord of the Rings Online, you can earn a title called Vegetarian by eating all of the vegeta- like a cer- like certain vegetarian dishes. And like I created a character named beefsteak specifically <laughs> because i wanted it to be beefsteak the vegetarian so you get a trophy that says beefsteak is in persona 4 which i keep bringing up because they have so many food great food related things there's a, a restaurant that sells beef bowls and they have a rainy day beef bowl challenge if you can eat this entire giant very expensive beef bowl you get it for free but you have to have like super high stats to do it so you have to keep raising your stats to try and win the rainy day beef full mm-hmm. challenge i haven't i haven't done it in this new file yet but uh oh man and persona 4 has this thing where you can just dig through your refrigerator and then you see like weird looking expired stuff and like if you decide to drink like this old expired yoohoo in your <laughs> fridge like you'll get really sick but your courage stat will go up yeah and that's probably the best food-related mechanic I've ever seen in a video game. That's awesome. And, of course, it would have to be something bizarre like expired Yoohoo in your fridge. I like that. I love that regular trope throughout video games. Like, they throw food in because, yeah, no, that's a believable mechanic. Food heals you, whatever. Mm-hmm. Sure, fine. But you can't put it in a believable place. Like, you know, like, it's going to be in the trash can. It's going to mm-hmm. be in the wall. Or my absolute favorite what the fuck are you thinking? It was from Final Fantasy VI uh, on the Phantom Train when uh, you get to the dining cart. Saban just, you know, sits down and slams his fists on the table. Bring me all the food you got! Oh, wait, so you're on a ghost train <laughs> taking ghosts to the afterlife. And not only are you going to eat the food there, you're going to demand that the ghosts bring you all the food they I have. I mean, ghost food's probably not that filling. So he <laughs> figures, I gotta eat all the food these ghosts got if I'm gonna fill my stomach. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and he needs that strength to be able to suplex the train. It's so. true, it's true. <laughs> Yeah. Pokemon has a uh, battle restaurants where like you sit down and you eat a meal and in between courses you if have fight Pokemon battles with your waiters. Oh man, it's the best. <laughs> that is pretty great. I, I if love you that could one. do that in real life, it's all I would do mm-hmm. is eat out at Pokemon restaurants. <laughs> Not eating Pokemon. Just, I think one of the more, more appropriate games that I play that incorporated the food, at least in a reasonable way, is uh, Yakuza. Oh, yeah, Yakuza. You go to restaurants, great. you buy your snacks from stores. and Wait, I, I just, I have to ask, what about an uh, Executor or, or Tropia? Like, what about the plant Pokemons? Would you eat those? I'm, uh, no, I'm not going to eat any Pokemon. But they're, they're plants. Just... No, I'm not going to eat them because they're cute. Tropia's not that cute. The Brontosaurus was leaf wings. And Brontosaurus is adorable. Actually, you're right. Brontosauruses are adorable. Executors are not cute. <coughs> no, they're not cute. They, that's one of my least favorite Pokemon. They're palm trees. So would you eat one of those? No. You know, to be fair, a palm tree probably wouldn't taste that good. Well, I don't know about you, but I am getting rather hungry, and hopefully our listeners are too, because, uh, you know, this has been a... 
smorgasbord of uh, food-related game discussion, and uh, I'm sure there are plenty of games and mechanics that we've missed, and uh, feel free to touch on those uh, in the comments if you like. I'm going to leave you with a tip. I've been playing Grand Theft Auto Online for a bit, and I've noticed that people that I play with randomly don't seem to realize that the uh, candy bars that you can buy at the convenience stores give you health. So keep that in mind when you're out there banging gangs, doing your thing. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us for another amazing episode. Happy Thanksgiving to one and all. Good night. Now we're bra- brack from the <laughs> bake. We're brack from the bake. All right, Man, welcome. You guys cannot handle your cupcakes. <laughs> Look. It's Thanksgiving, okay? <laughs> and of course, I'm sorry. <laughs> I like poop. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfuckers cannot handle your cupcakes. <laughs> you know the de- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's fuck all. Yeah, I have another cupcake. <laughs> You know, seeing as how it's that time of year where we're thankful for givings and... (laughs) (laughs) What is you and you been laughing about? (laughs) Thankful for all of Julian's cakes that are lies. (laughs) It's because... I'm sorry. Okay. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving, right? (laughs) Yeah. Let's let's maybe take that one from the top.